Ah, jeez. All right. I don't want to repeat it. No, no, I'll repeat it. I'll repeat it. Okay, so I assume you guys can hear me now. Yes, sir. Yes, we can hear you now. Damn. Ah, jeez. Oh. Sorry about that. That's why I was... Uh, so I see some thumbs. Okay. We will try again. Oh, boy. This will have to be edited. <laughs> Uh, pay attention to my, I got to pay attention to the comments a bit more. All right, let me just jump in. So somebody was asking me a question. And I guess you saw the question. Let me just see it again. I'll give you the abridged version. So I heard developers say you can learn while you earn, as in start working freelance jobs as you continue to learn other languages. Um, yes, that's actually par for the course for development. He continues. If I finish your HTML5 course and finish the CSS3, uh, chapter 3, excuse me. I finished your HTML5 course and I just finished chapter 3 in your CSS3 course. Do you think there's plenty of freelancing opportunities for someone that's learning while earning? Short answer is yes, but it, it's a question about what skill level you bet you have. For example... If I only know HTML5 and CSS3, could I start freelancing with those two languages while learning JavaScript on the side? Um, it is, if it is possible to start with those two languages, do you have any tips on how to go about doing that? Uh, if you can, put, okay. So instead of reading the email, since I know what it is, I'm going to get to the point since I've already been on this for 16 minutes. Um, so he's asking, can you? Continue to learn while you earn as a coder. This is common for the first few years. In fact, you'll be learning quite a bit on the job. The key to getting into the development space is to get your feet in the door as quickly as possible. Entry-level job. Uh, that's the goal. And then w once you're there, you'll find that the amount of learning will increase quite a bit because you'll be in an environment, you'll be f uh, pushed into doing certain things, uh, you'll be working with coworkers. This all contributes to you learning much more quickly and, and much more. So yes, you can earn while you learn. Now the question is, what's the minimal skill that you need to get to start doing, say, freelance gigs on the side? It depends. It depends on you. It depends on how well you present yourself. It depends on the market that you're in. HTML5, CSS3 are probably the bare minimum, being being able to do responsive websites and so forth. So if you're doing my studio web courses, finish definitely the CSS3 Pro course. Then what you do is you put up a website. A website is your profile of yourself, if you will. And then what you do is you go out there and you do two to three small little projects. Again, if people have been following me, you know, this is the answer. He also continues to say, should I learn JavaScript or PHP before going freelance, before trying to get gigs? It will just... If you, you don't necessarily have to, but if you do know it, uh, you will have a much wider range of jobs that you can approach and will also give you a lot more confidence in terms of development. So, yeah, in terms of, um, that was the other point I made earlier. Now, one of the illusions out there in the world is that you have to know everything to get the job. It doesn't work that way. There's a certain minimal skill set that you need, but... Um, it's not expected of you when you first apply for a job, especially entry-level job, that you necessarily need to know everything, depending on the type of job you apply for. Yeah. One thing I want to point out is the, I believe it is the number two thing that uh, when people are hiring developers, the number two thing that they say they have problems with is finding developers who have good communication skills, interpersonal skills. So you want to work on that as well. You want to work on that as well. And make sure you get that going. Meaning, make sure that you have good, good ability to communicate. Anyhow, so my apologies for the sound difficulties. I forgot to do uh, my sound test, what I always do. Sorry, I'll pay attention to the chats next time a bit more. So that pretty much covers the, uh, the question I wanted to answer tonight. Um... Let me just give you a few things here. Now, if you like that jazzy music that I had in the uh, beginning, that um, is based on 
somebody called uh, Miles Davis, uh, and it's based on an album called A Silent Way, which I would recommend. Now, if you like that kind of music, I'm going to show you uh, a cool piece of vinyl. This is a very famous album, Steely Dan. Oops, Steely Dan, Asia, or Asia. Very jazz, uh, pop. You've probably heard a few of the tunes on here, very big. Uh, this is Japanese vinyl. See the Japanese uh, OB here? Um, a Japanese pressings are known to be very high quality, so they're highly sought after. Anyway, here's a recommended album of the night if you're into jazz music. Steely, Steely Jan Dan Asia. Let's see, two other things. Um, again, a book that I recommend. Find the links below. Naked Ape. This will blow your mind. Uh, check it out. A couple of zoologists basically study humans like they would study apes, and it gives you kind of insight into uh, being a human. That's kind of cool. Uh, what else do we got here? What else do we got here? Uh, if you're a total beginner, you can still get my book on web design. It's written to be evergreen for total beginners, if you like to read. My studio web courses are far more comprehensive, but a lot of people like this because um, they like to read, and it just gives you a different perspective. It's, it's a nice book. Anyway, you can get this on Amazon. link is below. Um, I don't make money on this book. It's uh, the way the publishers work is... Uh, anyway, I'll get into that. If you are an established coder and you want to up your game, besides just building things, you may want to check out refactoring. Refactoring is a process of cleaning up code in a very particular way. There's a link below for the Java version, which is this, and the JavaScript version uh, by the same author. Um, refactoring is universal for all the languages, basically, by all the modern languages. And it will really up your game, make you a better coder. So refactoring. This is one of the few books that I still have from uh, over 20, was it 22 years ago? Uh, so this is one of the very few. Uh, there's one or two. That's about it. This is this is universal knowledge refactoring. If you already are a coder and you want to up your game, that's cool. And finally, um, if you're looking to start a business, a SaaS business, software as a service business, and you're looking to plan out apps or websites, etc., et this is a book you might want to consider. Uh, business model generation. It's not so much about coding, it's about building businesses. So it's something you might want to consider. My friend used to work at uh, SAP, and this is the Bible they used to refer to. Um, yeah, so that's something that was recommended to me. There you go. Um, yeah, let's answer a few questions. Um, oh, very cool. Ah, that's real cool. Trumpet player. Very good. Very good. Uh, still need to check out that Lizard Wizard. Yeah, Lizard Lizard. Lizard Wizard is my own course. Uh, what I put together for my mentoring program and I released it to the public to uh, help people understand the two operating systems of your brain. You have two operating systems uh, that control your brain. Uh, one is the higher level cognitive brain. Uh, the people who discovered this guy named Kahneman called it System 2. And then you have the lower level lizard brain. And it's called lizard brain because we share that brain, that operating system rather, with lizards. Controls all our emotions, our heartbeat, etc. Anyway, once you understand the two operating systems and how they work together and their rules, it's a lot easier to learn more quickly, to develop good interpersonal skills, take care of anxieties, Emotional emotional issues. All right. So let me scroll up. Okay. We can hear me. Everybody can hear me. Uh, all right. All right. Good, good, good. I'm just looking for questions. You have questions. Put them now. <laughs> you guys who stuck around for the, uh, I guess it was seven minutes of uh, no audio. Very patient of you. My appreciations. Uh, yeah. I appreciate the thumbs up, by the way. Okay, so yeah, long story, uh, long, long story short for Chanel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah, I think it's the first time I've done that. Next time I'm going to do my uh, little Ruby check. 
Uh, do you remember what you said? I gave you the, the short version of what I said. A lesson learned. You make great mistakes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay. <laughs> Much appreciated. <laughs> At least you don't slap yourself when you make a mistake. There you go. Yeah, where's Chris Rock when you need him? Uh, you were so much in a flow state, you forgot to check your audio. <laughs> That's true. I was I was chilling out to my uh, to the tune there. Yeah. Uh, how how about some good old assembly language course? Oh no 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 no. <laughs> I don't know assembly. I looked at it like 20, 20 odd years ago, and uh, no, it's not for me. Um, if you do assembly, you probably have all kinds of jobs available for you. But it's a very different type of uh, programming, that's for sure. Very different type of programming. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think once you can start reading and understanding documentation, you can learn and earn. Yeah, pretty much. That's a good, Andrew, I like that assessment. Yeah, yeah. That's the goal. Even in my Python course, for example, I show... People, I take them to the python.org. We look at some of the documentation. I show a little bit of how to navigate it, you know, because, yeah, that's how it is to be. A developer is not about, again, another myth out there. They say, oh, it's memorization. No, it is. It's not about memorization is minimal, minimally important in development, in the development game. It's about conceptual understanding and good best practices. Because if you forget something, you just look it up. Just go to Google and go, you know, how to, uh, I don't know, how to, how to uh, scrape a web page with Python. And you find all kinds of articles and so forth, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Coding is not a memorization game. Uh, hello, hey. How are you doing? I guess it's Ramadan for everybody, everybody around the world, right? All the Muslims anyway. Uh, fasting, by the way, is good for you. I do fast. I do intermittent fasting, uh, not necessarily, f not for religious reasons, but for health reasons. It's, um, I've been slacking on my fasting right lately, but it's very good. If you get into the rhythm of it, uh, it's very good for your, um, what you call it, uh, for your health and your energy and your thought processes. Uh, uh Stefan, risk or sisk? Um, uh, are you talking about processors here? Uh, okay, what's going on? What's going on? There we go. Todd Boothy says, Booth B, excuse me. Does the negative ape indicate that we develop our bare skin and our breath holding ability while swimming after fish or food? No, 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 no. Naked ape is um, basically you got a couple of zoologists who uh, studied humans the way they would study other animals and they apply the same method. There's a methodology and they describe and they observe humans as they would other animals. And it's very fascinating because you, what you basically get out of it is that we share so many of the same uh, hab habits, if you will, and characteristics of so many other animals. It's pretty, it's pretty astounding. It's a kind of eye opening. This is like, um, apparently it says right here, the year's most, talked about bestseller so yeah so it, it really opens your eyes this is an old book the pages are yellow i bought this copy when i was like uh, 14 years old so that was before this was printed this is the 1970 edition here <laughs> yeah so it's pretty old pretty old but uh i still kept it from those days that's how valuable this book is one of the most valuable books i ever read I think we'll open your eyes to things. Uh, <laughs> all the questions are about audio. What's your opinion? Uh, what's your opinion about on Flutter and mobile development? I think Flutter has a place. Um, I don't know if it's going to take over, but I've been. I looked at Flutter when it was in beta, I guess, and I liked it. Um, I liked the technology from my overview. And I figured since Google was using Flutter for their main money-making app, I assumed they had a lot of uh, faith in it. So, yeah, Flutter's cool. Again, not too many jobs out there yet, but it's an interesting technology that's worthy. So you have to understand, you can have technologies that are really, really good, 
but they just don't get the traction. So you have to be careful with that. You don't want to ever find yourself, and I'm not saying Flutter is this, but you'd ever, you don't want to find yourself necessarily uh, learning a technology that leads to a dead end, um, some weird, obscure thing. Um, you stick to the top 10 languages and frameworks and you're pretty set. But again, once you get good, you can just pivot from one thing to the other pretty quickly. But I've seen in my career uh, really good technologies that just didn't get traction for whatever reasons, and they were superior, in my opinion anyway, uh, to the mainstream stuff. So, you know. Uh, is it necessary to focus on a niche, or is it okay to become a jack-of-all-trades? Depends on what you want to do. If you're freelancing, jack-of-all-trades, for sure. For sure. Um... Uh, I can teach assembly. Uh, you can accept me in your team. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. I'm just looking for questions. Give me a second here. Ah, risk reduced instruction set computing. Sys complex instruction set computing. Which architecture do you prefer? Do you like better? Ah, you know what? I'm going to have to look at that. I'm going to have to look at that. I don't have an answer. Appreciation from Brazil. Sad, sad I've got to go in bed now. Couldn't catch this live like your videos. I've watched a few. Ah, cool. Appreciate it. Get to sleep. I'm going to have to go to sleep too soon. It's almost 1 a.m. Uh, as C-sharp dev, should I learn another language like PHP for freelancing? I feel like C-sharp is used mostly in corporate. Yeah, C-sharp is mostly used in corporate like Java. If you want to freelance, you're going to see it's going to be dominated by a lot of PHP. Of course, the web, rest of the web stack, HTML, CSS, maybe some JavaScript as well. Those are the key languages for freelance. Do you see many opportunities as a freelancer in the niche of e-commerce development? Oh, yeah, plenty. The uh, thing is, there's so many different e-commerce implementations. There's so many different ways you can do that, but for sure, 100%. If you want to do that, learn PHP, the web stack, and then you can go out and do that. You may find yourself implementing uh, uh, on the high level Shopify. You may start getting into PayPal and Stripe integrations. It all depends, you know. Uh... <laughs> Eh, that's funny. Uh, for mobile app, which languages is best to start? You know, for mobile, I always say go cross-platform. So I would go with the web stack. Uh, other than that, depends on what type of development you want to do. If you're going to do iOS, of course, you can use Swift. And if you're going to do Android, I would use I would learn Kotlin. Uh, with Android development, you can do Kotlin and Java, but even Google says... Use Kotlin, it's faster, easier. And with uh, iOS, of course, it's Objective-C and Swift, but most of the work, I believe, is still Swift. Uh, no, I haven't used it, so I don't have a com comment there. I'm a freelancer, and I feel that to be very good, I need to learn advanced topics such as design patterns. Well, just speed, you know, what design patterns will do, design patterns, I'll explain very quickly what they are. Design patterns are just a predefined ways in which common software problems are solved. So design patterns are basically uh, game plans, if you will. In football, you would have these plays, I guess. They're game plans. That, oh, you have this problem, use this design pattern. If you have that problem, use that design pattern. It's just a quick way of uh, communicating how you might resolve a problem. And it's, uh, and it's a good way to learn best practices because if you study design patterns to a certain extent, you'll learn how all these other developers have figured out how to solve common problems. So the biggest one out there is something called MVC, Model View Controller. Uh, this is, uh, could be, I don't know, you might argue it's the granddaddy, the most important design pattern. It's the modern way in which most web apps, most apps are created. Although some people are breaking away from that now a little bit. So that's just a design pattern. So for example, if I have my developers, they say, we're going to develop this. Yeah, use MVC or, uh, you know, 
you know, use model, we call model two in the old days, MVC was model two. And we had model one, or this one is too simple to use model one, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, you learn design patterns. It would just make you a better developer. And it will allow you, if you work with other people who know design patterns, allow you more quickly and effectively communicate with them. Yes, design patterns and refactoring are the two skill sets I suggest that people get into after they do their fundamentals. Uh, what else do we got here? Let's see. With war, with the war, coof, coof, coof. Inflation, shortages, etc. Do you ever wonder if we've lost touch with natural, real-world skills? Avid developer. Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, you know different skills for different times, right? Uh, also, where you live. My father is like a hunter, fisherman type of dude. So he's uh, he lives right beside the woods, essentially. So he's got all those hunting and fishing and boating skills. I have a lot of fishing and boating, camping, and uh, canoe camping skills. But I'm not much of a hunter. Actually, I don't hunt. But um, he'll argue that those skills are valuable today. I don't know. Remember, lizard lesson. Uh, here's a lizard lesson, rather. Remember that... Um, Fears, our fears are amplified, exaggerated artificially by the lizard. So I think we'll be okay. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. Eric says, I'm getting ready to enroll in your mentoring program and wondered what you think of Salesforce CRM development. I'm a former sales rep and seems to be an interesting niche. Probably a lot of opportunity there. Again, what I suggest, check out indeed.com. Check out the web, see what the demand is for independent Salesforce people or going to work for Salesforce, see what they're looking for in their candidates. Um, I'm a former sales rep, sales rep for CR for, for Salesforce or just a sales rep in general. So uh, since you're already a sales rep, you might you might be pretty good to you might be a pretty good match for freelancing. You may want to consider that. I appreciate that. Thank you, Anissa. Yeah, 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 yeah. Greetings, Miss. Greetings to Mr. Stefan. I like teaching, but not working for companies. Are you planning on making a course on how to teach students? Thank you. I don't know. I never thought about that. I've been working with schools for over a decade, so that helps me improve my teaching skill. But I learned how to teach from my father and my family. My father's a teacher. And 15 people in my immediate family were teachers or are teachers. So it's kind of in the blood for me. Do you need to have good design skills to become a web or mobile developer? No, you can just work on uh, the full stack, the middle layer, the back end. You don't need to have good design skills. Just learn the very basics and you're, even, you're fun there, man. You're fine there, excuse me. Assembly, very cryptic. Yeah, well, I had a friend of mine. <laughs> He was a pretty good assembly programmer amongst every other, every other, many other languages. He worked at Apple, Microsoft, and a whole bunch of other companies. And um, eventually, he took the assembly off his resume because kept, people kept wanting to hire him to do assembly programming. He hated doing it. So he, he, he just he, he took it off his resume and never told anybody new assembly anymore. But you may like it. I don't know. Where is the best place to freelance? Well, it depends. I don't know. What do you mean by that? Do you mean website or you mean location in the world? Yes, DJ. Fasting is very healthy. Indeed, it is. Former medical sales. Thank you for the answer. Ah, very cool. Yeah, yeah. You may be able to, you know, you, since you did medical sales, you probably be able to, you might have a lot of contacts there. Maybe uh, independent doctors or you know, medical establishments. I don't know if you're in, I guess you're in the U.S., I would guess. Uh, you might see some oppor opportunity there for yourself. I am a junior intermediate.net developer. How can I step up my game? Get, get into refactoring, as I mentioned. Get into refactoring. Uh, I don't, there's probably a C-sharp refactoring book, but this is for Java, which, you know, C sharp is, is very similar to Java. So everything you learn in this, you learn in, uh, will apply to C sharp, of course. 
Um, and the other thing you would get into is design patterns. Beef up your design pattern skills. That will help. Um, all right, how are we doing for time? Okay. So, recommended low code options. So, low code are, I'm trying to think of a non wit nerd. It's basically their services where, uh, it's kind of like VB6, where you've got a lot of drag and dropping, and you can develop apps pretty quickly without writing too much code. Uh, they give you ability to go in there and write code, but you can get a lot of the what they call the boilerplate stuff done pretty quickly without having to write code. Ah, there's so many out there. I did actually review one in a recent past. I'm trying to remember what it's called all of a sudden, but there's a few. I'll have to mention in another video. Uh, do, 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 do. Wait, is assembly programming lucrative if you don't do it for free? Uh, yeah, at least in North America, uh, assembly programmers are in high demand. Not that there's a huge amount of assembly jobs out there. Yeah, yeah, but as far as I know, yeah, yeah. Hi, Steph. Nice to see you. Do you do anything to detox from text just to get away from it all for a bit? That's good. Good question, James. Yes, I suggest to people that you step away from technology. I sometimes will go for, for walks up the mountain here and I'll leave my phone behind. It's pretty freeing psychologically when you don't have your phone with you and you're just going around. I go for long walks. Um, when the gym was open, the gym's back open. I got to get back into it. I used to go train uh, every day. Um, I like the steam rooms. It's it's really important to pull away from screens on a regular basis. It's, this will make you a more productive uh, developer. It'll make you more productive because you'll be more relaxed. You don't want to do be always in front of it. So you want to take time for yourself away from tech. What do you think about Node.js and TypeScript? They're both used quite a bit. There's... Um, there's uh, a lot of uh, opportunity there. They have their uses. Uh, uh, Stefan Mischuk, Refactor, Improving and Design Existing Code 20 to 1990. I would get the later edition. I'm sure they've made some improvements or some uh, modifications. Yeah, I would get the later edition for sure. Uh, Joseph says, thanks for hosting this live but lead software engineer at my current job is making it difficult to pursue any opportunity within the company. Would What would you do in this situation Just three years in? Oof. Well, if you don't like your job, um, I would quietly start looking for other jobs maybe. Um, see if, you know, I've seen many times where people have moved up the, the ranks and the salaries by moving from company A to B to C, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. After three years, sure, why not? Enko, hey Uncle, I got laid, laid. I got laid as an IT space specialist. I mean, I guess you mean you got laid off as an IT specialist position that basically means I'm a jack of all, master of none. Just started learning full stack in the interim. How can I fast track my learning? Just uh, get your HTML5, your CSS3, your JavaScript down, and then start building websites. Go out there, start building little projects for free for people. You got to get your hands dirty with real code. Not get, Don't get stuck doing tutorials for six months. What do you think about coding interviews? Often questions are asked that have nothing to do with the job or, or you are supposed to work without an editor and ID and Google. That's not fair. Yeah, it depends on the company. Yeah, they often ask questions that have nothing to do with the job because they're trying to discern your personality. They want to see, Norman, whether or not you can fit into their um, their group, their culture. Uh, it's a big part of it. A huge part about being a success, successful developer is being able to communicate with people around you. So I'm not surprised about that. There are jobs with a decent salary only requiring HTML, CSS, JS, don't need to know everything. Exactly. That's uh, 100%. Good advice. Oh, by the way, this is the official channel salute. Cold, long, and uh, prosper. Double guns. If you can do this naturally, it's 
sure, pretty good sign with your nerd. I don't hire anybody unless they can do this. Like they get, it's got to be smooth. Can't you can't be doing like this? You have to. <laughs> Is there any dev compliance career paths? I don't know. You have to look in that. I would, I would suggest larger companies. I don't want to be a data scientist, but I got an internship this summer for data science. I'm learning web development in C++. Will learning Python and ML throw me off? No, it would just contribute, um, especially at this stage in your career. You're still learning. Take the inter internship. You know, just do it. Even if you hate it, do it for a few months. You'll come away with some experience that's valuable. Who knows? You may come to like it, but if you don't, it's still not a waste. So, yeah, I would do it. Uh, I am, I already am familiar with refactoring, clean code, and a bit of clean architecture and several design power. What else can I do to get to senior level? Uh, very good, Stefan. Good name, by the way. Uh, yeah. I would work on communication skills, organizational skills. Um, make yourself useful, very useful. Um, that's my suggestion at that point. Off the top of my head, although it's one in the morning, so my uh, cognitive capacities are uh, dropping off pretty quick. Mm. Yeah, I figured that much. <laughs> uh, I am working as a Python web developer. I want to be... I want to be in Amazon or Google, but DSA is very much important for that. But I get stuck in problem solving. How do I do better? By the way, I am from Kashmir, India. Ah, very cool. Um, I guess I guess you just you know what I would do is I would research uh, what they're testing for in terms of do in job interviews on Amazon, Google, and take it from there. That information is out there. Uh, yeah, yeah. By the way. You remind me. One of my favorite songs of all time is a song called Kashmir by Led Zeppelin. Fantastic song. It's got a very much a um, an Asian uh, rhythm to it. It's pretty cool. Kashmir is the song by Led Zeppelin, the group. Get back to me. Um, <laughs> what exactly is DevOps? I haven't found a clear explanation. It's short for developer operations. Is this a set of processes uh, that people use to handle projects, coding projects, handle how code is uh, coded and how it's integrated into the main uh, into main app? You don't want people uploading crappy code into your software, so you usually have a senior senior developer lead a tech lead who will. Make sure that people who are writing code before it gets integrated into the main code base, it's vetted and checked. So there's all these processes that get into that. And that's what that is. In a nutshell. Uh, yeah, yeah. Your opinion on digital nomads lifestyle. All right. I'm a, I can talk about that. I uh, was probably one of the original digital nomads in the 90s. Um, before it was a thing, and uh, it's got its pros and its cons. When you are a digital nomad, typically it's a lot of solo time. You don't have coworkers around you because you're you're nomadic. You're moving around. Some people really like that. The good thing, though, today with uh, you know high speed internet and uh, you know, the messaging platforms, you're not nearly as isolating, isolated as it was back in the 1990s when I was doing it. Uh, for me, you know, yeah, there was no manner of things that we, you know, smartphones, all this, it wasn't there. So I had to go out and meet people. Uh, but I also like working alone too. I got, I was very productive. It's a, it's a, you know, to be a digital nomad is a lifestyle choice, and you, have, you might have to just try it out, see if it's for you or not. Everybody's different. What's the philosophy behind only interpreted JavaScript and never languages like TypeScript and Dart directly by the browser? Do you support it? 
Well, I don't know if I understand your question. Um, I think what you're trying to say is uh, why did JavaScript, why did they have a loosely type, uh, loosey goosey language? Why was it developed that way? Because they wanted to make it, they wanted to make JavaScript forgiving so it was easy to jump into. Uh, of course, what that does, the cost of that is the language becomes much more, you can, it's much more, it's much easier to introduce bugs into your code because JavaScript is kind of, it's wet and wild. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the story behind JavaScript. So when you look at TypeScript and, and Dart, you're, you're looking at an attempt um, to uh, bring in some of the advantages of a light, light, lightweight language like JavaScript, but with some of the advantages of uh, more robust languages like Java or C Sharp that have uh, type safety and so on. Uh, opinion on augmented reality. I think it's pretty bloody cool. I got myself the Oculus so I could box. There's this game in the Oculus called Throw of the Fight. I used to box for real. But uh, Uncle Steph's too old to box now. But uh, but I can virtually box with the uh, Oculus. So that's cool. I think uh, augmented, well, that's virtual reality. But augmented and virtual reality, I think it's got its use cases. We'll see whether or not it becomes mainstream. And that's going to come down to, first of all, whether they can get the hardware to a point where it's miniaturized enough that it's not encumbering. But it could be pretty big. I was super impressed with the Oculus. My friend bought it. So it's not so much augmented, but it's a virtual reality. And I tried it, and I was like, wow, I like this thing. So because um, when you put it on, this is VR, of course, virtual reality. It's like literally your lizard brain is like, what the hell? Your lizard brain doesn't know, can't discern the fact, doesn't, it hasn't, it's not able to figure out the fact that you're actually in, you're just in a simulation. It thinks you are there. So you could be swimming with sharks and your lizard brain is like, oh my God, there's sharks around. Even though your intellectual self knows that it's not a real shark, but all the emotions come flooding in and it's, it's crazy. If you try the Oculus and some of the basic games, um, it's going to help you uh, understand uh, reality. It's very cool. Hey, no problem. I appreciate the, uh, the coffee. Oops, there you go. Cheers. Now you know I'm getting tired because I'm mixing up my devil horns with my uh, my Vulcan. All right. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, Dan. That's that's common. Even back in the '90s, the the HR departments, the human resource departments would post these silly job requirements, but didn't make any sense. They'd ask for. I remember at the time. They were asking for like five years experience with a technology that was only two years old or one year old. <laughs> it's crazy. Welcome to the stream. All right, I'm going to be wrapping this up because it's pretty late and Uncle Steph's tired. Hey, Uncle Steph, just wondering what's your opinion about blockchain developer or blockchain itself? I think it has a future, but I think it is uh, niche. Uh, so just poke around in it, see, see if you like it or not. See if there's opportunities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty funny stuff. Uh, you just laugh and you move on from those type of jobs. Uh, in 2022, software engineers need to be data driven. Well, they always have been. They've always have been from my experience. Anyway. Hey, Steph, started watching your vids back in November, decided to pursue freelance coding as a side hustle. Got my first coding gig last week. Thanks for the info. Hey, congratulations, John. Cool. Good stuff. All right. That's not a bad turnaround. Good stuff. I had an interview with a marketing company and went through four rounds of interviews. Huh? At the last minute, a better candidate came in. The CEO likes me and offered me subcontract work. Should I pursue this? Yeah, get your foot in the door, get some experience. Why not? You know, I don't know your your full situation. I don't know if you can subcontract on the side while you have your main job. Is a subcontract lucrative enough for you? Um, yeah, when you, as a general rule, when you're getting into a new job or new career, um, you're getting into a new business. Uh, 
you want to get your foot in the door. That's the key. You want to get your foot in the door. So if that opportunity presents itself, even if it's not ideal, generally speaking, without knowing your entire situation, it's a good idea to pursue. All right. Okay. Let's see. So, so many questions. So my apologies earlier this e evening vis-a-vis -vis the sound. Um, what I'll do is I'll pull this offline and make a better edit. So if you came late, so we can cut off that <laughs> minutes of uh, me messing up. Uh, uh, just a quick note. Data-driven and data science is massively overhyped. I wouldn't be surprised about that. Um, yeah, we'll have to talk about that in other videos. All right, thanks for joining the stream, guys. Sorry for the technical difficulties once again. And uh, yeah, remember, uh, I'll bring that back, that album again. Steely Dan, Steely Dan Asia. Audio files, those are... Um, Audio nerds, audiophiles love this album because certain albums are well recorded, well engineered, so the sound is great, and other albums, not so good. This one is one of the um, benchmark albums that audiophiles listen to, very much so. And it's a good album, it's very jazz. There's a couple of big hits on there, but if you like jazz, this is a very cool album. And if you're wondering, this is vinyl, this is Japanese vinyl, you know, because you got the Japanese. Uh, OB uh, thing here. And Japanese vinyl is highly prized by audiophiles because the quality was much higher, much more consistent. So yeah, this is an interesting album. You can you know pick it up on Spotify. I, the, I think the most popular song on here for non-nerds is Peg. P-E-G. P-E-G. But there's a lot of good songs. If you want to get into... This is a good uh, Peg. This is a good programming album, by the way. You can get into a groove, you're writing code, it's cool. Anyway, let me know next stream what you think of uh, Asia, whoever decides to listen to it. All right. Cheers, guys. Thanks for the stream. And uh, yeah, I'll leave you with my uh, ASMR boat. Uh, this is in, uh, in Maine. Okay, I'm starting to stutter, too tired, 1 a.m. Cheers.